Hi, you're watching Teen Kids News. I'm Lila. Let's begin with our top story. Whoever said that silence is golden wasn't a passenger in a car with an unsafe driver. The National Road Safety Foundation wants you to know that you have a responsibility to speak up. And to get that message across, we travel to Aberdeen, South Dakota. My name's Caitlin Ryan and I'm a junior at Central High School. Caitlin is a member of Aberdeen's chapter of SAD, Students Against Destructive Decisions. The organization's vision is to create a healthier and safer world, one positive decision at a time. I joined SAD because a lot of my friends were involved and they said that they were doing really good things in our community and helping each other out. One of those good things is partnering with the NRSF. SAD chapters across the country are invited to enter the Driving Skills 101 PSA contest. Every year, a different aspect of traffic safety is chosen. For example, speeding, tailgating, or driver distraction. The reminiscence of your kids lingers in the dark. Watch out! This year's topic focused on those not sitting in the driver's seat. We want passengers to speak up and make sure the driver in the vehicle they're in is driving safely. To help Caitlin create the PSA, the NRSF sent a professional TV crew to work with her. Hi. Hello. I'm David. I'll be pointing cameras at you all day long. <laughs> and that's Rick. Hi. I'll also be pointing cameras at you. Hello. Rick is the DP. All right, so we're going to unload and go through this door. Yep. The producer and director sat down with Caitlin and the classmates she recruited to be the actors in her PSA. So there are three scenarios in which unsafe activities are happening and then the passenger is going to speak up to prevent those activities. Uh, I created the storyboards for the scenes. Basically I have to try and design the scenes that are on the script and make it so then it's easy for the actors to look at and perform them. But if we end up in the hospital, there goes our shot at varsity. Good. Good. All right. For each of these scenarios, let's let's each of you drivers after the the last line was delivered acknowledge in some way that you're hearing the passenger. Okay. You're tailgating only because he isn't going fast enough. But if he suddenly stops, we're going to slam into him, and you can say goodbye to graduation. <laughs> Work on that, one. <laughs> but that was good enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Think in your head. Oh, you're right. You know, you don't have to say the words. <laughs> okay, the first group uh, of guys. After rehearsing with the storyboards, it was time to move outside. Scene seven, take twenty-three. Today we started by filming some car scenes of what would happen if they were behaving unsafely. Okay. One more time to the top, Cue. Come on, move over! You're tailgating! Only because he isn't going fast enough. But if he suddenly stops, you're going to slam into him and you can say goodbye to graduation. Good point. What do you think? And then later we had lunch and we moved on to some uh, indoor scenes of what they would be missing if they were driving unsafely and crashed. For example, they would miss prom. Scene 10, take 24. All right, here we go. Positions, please. And action. Let's take a selfie. Cut. That was perfect. <laughs> so how did the day go? A little stressful, <laughs> but really fun, like a lot of fun. It's great to be here with my friends and be able to spread a message to be safe while you're driving. I think it came out really well. I'm excited to see the final product. After the PSA was edited, it was shared with SAD chapters across the country in a Facebook Live event. Here it is. Whoa, slow down, you're speeding. Well, I don't want to miss tryouts. Okay, team, smile! Neither do I, but if we end up in the hospital, there goes our shot at varsity. Where's the after party at again? I think it's at Kara's house. I 
thought it was at Steve's. I'll check. No, I can text for you. Are you sure? I can do it. Let's take a selfie. No, you need to be focusing on driving or else we're not even gonna make it to prom. Yeah. Come on, move over. You're tailgating only because he isn't going fast enough. But if he suddenly stops, you're going to slam into him and you can say goodbye to graduation. Congratulations! Good point. Don't risk your future. Don't stay silent. Passengers have power. Speak up. I think what I like most about this PSA is that it shows real case scenarios of what young people go through, especially during prom and graduation time. And if you're in a vehicle with someone who's doing something dangerous that you can speak up, empower yourself because you can save a life and that person can make it to prom or graduation. Yes, there's so much to live for. Being in a car with an unsafe driver is certainly not the time to follow the rule that silence is golden. Speak up. For Teen Kids News, I'm Katerina. We still have a lot more to tell you about. Teen Kids News will be right back. Ava gets some advice on one of the biggest decisions you'll make in your teen years. Actually, it's two big decisions. The first is, should I go to college? According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 61% of high school grads do attend college. Of course, keep in mind that about 40% of teens don't go to college. You don't need a degree to have a good, well-paying career. Learning a trade like electrician or plumber, working in construction, or as a medical records technician, joining the military, these are just some of the many options. But if you have your heart set on a college education, then that brings us to that second big decision. Which college? One of the best ways to help you decide is to visit the college. And to give us some tips on how to make the most of that visit, we're joined by a former admissions officer, Cynthia Cologne. She wrote the book, Be Committed, Get Admitted, Seven Steps to College Admission Success. As part of the process, most schools offer a tour and an information session. Should you attend both? Yes, this is a great question. And while the star of the show is the tour and it's typically led by a student who works in the admission office, the truth is the information session is going to be led by an admission officer who is part of the decision-making team of the college. So you're gonna get some real tips on the admission process, as well as learning about the institution, the benefits, all the pomp and circumstance, campus life. So I really encourage students to do both. When going to the campus for a tour, you recommend arrive early and be sure to sign in. Why is signing in important? Well, every college keeps track of their, their visitors their visitors to campus. So I want students to really imagine that if there was a big board with you know, all the names on it and you were gonna get a gold star every time you did something to engage with that institution, opening up an email, signing up for an information session online, taking a virtual tour and coming to campus. So it's like getting um, credit for showing up. It's a big deal. When you show up, it's a really important part of the process to sign in and get credit. Okay, got that. Should you try to drop in on the admissions counselor or is that being too pushy? Oh gosh, no, it's not being too pushy. So every teen should know that there are two chief advocates when it comes to your college application. The number one chief advocate is yourself and what you put into that application. The second most important person is the person reading your application who will inevitably, hopefully advocate for you to be admitted. Every college has someone assigned to your high school. So yes, if you're on campus, see if that person is available to say hello. When visiting the school, you also recommend the student should bring some questions. And you say they fall into two categories, academic questions and campus life questions. Can you give us some examples of each? An academic question might sound something like, what percentage of students have internships? What percentage of students study abroad or graduate within four years? A campus life question might sound something like, 
how many years is housing guaranteed for students? Or is there a soccer intramurals team? Or how many students do community service? Something like that. Good to know. Thanks for speaking with us. Oh, you're welcome. It's great to be here. Here's some more advice. Take pictures. After you've been to four or five schools, they tend to look the same. So having photos will help. Also, don't wait to get home to write about a school, the good and even the not so good things. Make it a habit to write up your notes while they're still fresh. Say within a half hour of your visit. Good notes may be very useful in helping you decide which school is the best fit for you. For Teen Kids News, I'm Ava. It's the scene of the most famous Indian battle in history. I'll tell you all about it in Flag Facts, next on Teen Kids News. As you're about to see, a state flag can have a lot to say. Eric tells us more. It's home to cowboy ghost towns, Custer's Last Stand, seven Indian reservations, the world's shortest river, and largest migrating elk herd. The state animal is the grizzly bear. And its sweeping vistas earned it the nickname Big Sky Country. We're talking Montana, partner. Montana is from the Spanish word for mountains or mountainous. Admitted to the Union in 1889, its flag honors both the land and its people. So you see the tools of a miner, a pickaxe, a shovel. You also see farming tools for the settlers who came and settled the land. And in the back you see the river, the waterfall, and the Rocky Mountains in reference to the great nature they have in Montana. Montana's rich in precious minerals. The banner across the bottom boasts oro y plata, which means gold and silver. Montana is also rich in wildlife. It has more species of mammals than any other state. Our 41st state has some pretty strange laws. For example, it's illegal for unmarried women to go fishing by themselves on Sundays. I guess in Montana, there's better ways to hook a husband. With Flag Facts, I'm Eric. According to the Social Security Administration, the most popular name for boys being born today is Liam. It's believed that the name is popular because of two singers and one actor. Liam Payne was discovered on the program X Factor, then gained popularity with the band One Direction before going solo. Liam Gallagher was also in a band. He sang lead for Oasis, a group that disbanded before many of us were born. The third Liam is mega movie star actor Liam Neeson. Besides the name Liam, there's one other interesting connection between them. All three are from the United Kingdom. And if you're wondering, what's in a name from the land of Shakespeare that makes Liam so popular with American parents today? I have no idea. As for my name, I'm Reese for Teen Kids News. We've got to take a short break, and then we'll be back with more Teen Kids News. Before I tell you what this story is about, let's play a game. I'll give you two words, see if you can guess the connection. In Spanish, the word for green is verde, and the word for wind is viento. Verde, viento. Green, wind. If you figured out that this story is about green energy produced by wind, congrats. You're a true environmental warrior. And the reason we used words in Spanish to make the connection is because Spain is about to become the greenest energy user in Europe mostly thanks to its viento power. Spain has more than 21,000 wind turbines. The tall towers stretch for miles through the country's windswept regions. Experts say that Spain will soon be generating more than half of its power from renewable sources, the first major European country to do so. For Teen Kids News, I'm Benjamin. If you tend to overeat, here's an interesting tip. Eat foods with strong smells. A study found that strong smells encourage us to take smaller bites, and smaller bites lead to smaller portions, and smaller portions lead to a healthier diet, and a healthier diet leads to a healthier you. Guess you could call this the sweet smell of success. You 
You won't want to miss what's coming up next on Teen Kids News. Trust me. We'll be right back after this. Have you ever been outside somewhere when suddenly the sound of bells filled the air? I don't mean just the deep bongs telling the time. I'm talking about when the bells actually play a song. As Emily tells us, Belgium gets props for that. Let's start with Bell's Vocab 101. Bell Tower, a tall, narrow structure designed to house a bell or bells. Guess you could have figured that one out on your own. How about the word belfry? Belfry? Uh... I, I don't know what belfry means. <laughs> a, a bell that's free? <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> While belfry is often used interchangeably with bell tower, more accurately, the belfry is the part of the bell tower that holds the bell or bells. Last quiz question, promise. What's a carillon? No, oh, I have no idea what that is. A carillon, I don't know what it is. Uh, a type of food? Good guess, but no. Carillon refers to a set of bells in a tower played using a keyboard or by an automatic mechanism similar to a piano roll. We'll come back to this part in a moment. The quaint city of Bruges is home to one of the oldest and tallest carillons in Belgium. At 272 feet, it's almost exactly half the height of the Washington Monument. Tourists are invited to climb the tower's narrow and very steep steps, all 366 of them. Fortunately, there are things to stop and see along the way. This room was called the Treasury. In olden days, it's where money and important documents were stored. Then it's back to more climbing. We're finally in the Belfry. This is one of the Carillon's 47 bells. Though a bit hard to see, here's the hammer that bangs the bell on command. One of the first Carillon's able to play complex music was designed by a composer who was actually blind. His name was Jacob van Eyck, not to be confused with the Flemish painter Jan van Eyck. Notice the small bells on Jacob's table. He was experimenting with arranging them by note so they'd be capable of playing melodies. To do that, the musician, called a carolinist, sits at a console. It has keys called batons, as well as pedals. Each baton and pedal is connected to a particular bell. Let's listen to a musician playing a carillon console in Belgium's St. Rumbold's Cathedral. Remember this part of the definition? I'll explain. In medieval times, they used a computer. Well, since computers weren't invented for another 500 years, they didn't actually have a computer. But they did use the basic binary concept of computing, ones and zeros. We've probably all seen pianos that seem to play by themselves. Looks eerie, doesn't it? Inside the piano, there's a roll of paper. The paper is fed up to this roller. You can see the paper has columns of holes. Each column lines up with a specific piano key. When air from a tube is blown through a hole, that causes a note to sound on the piano. And you get this. The same principle applies to mechanically operated carillons. But instead of paper and air, a giant metal cylinder is used. 
Above the cylinder are levers, each connected to its own bell. When a peg hits a lever, in computer language, we'd call that a one. The lever rings its bell. If there's no peg, nothing hits the lever, so no bell. Call that a zero. Like I said, the same binary principle our modern computers use. Of course, it takes an expert to arrange the pegs in such a way that when the cylinder rotates, the desired music is heard. So, the next time you're walking down the street and you hear bells ringing out a tune, now you know how it's done. With a bit of Belgium, I'm Emily. Well, that wraps up our show for this week. But we'll be back with more Teen Kids news next week. See you then.